Hey guys, what's up? Are you one or zero here? So this week we are together again with another topic. Um, we're going to discuss, um, we're going to talk about introduction to IDA Pro, how to use this um, very complex tool to do reverse engineering. Um, and we're going to grab a binary from um, CrackMe, um, the website that holds so many binaries that, um, that allows you to download and play around, do some reverse engineering in order to patch the file um, and solve the exercise, let's say. So yeah, we're going to download a binary from CrackMe and um, we're going to use IDA Pro to understand how to solve the exercise. Um, I want to talk about the next videos. I always do that. So I was like doing some contemplation, uh, which which kind of videos I should include for the next videos because I was not creating content for a while, like four to five months. I was so um, stuck with OSEE preparation, which was a great break for me from YouTube. But I miss you guys. I want to create more videos. Um, I don't know. I, I feel comfortable when I create videos and share my knowledge doesn't have to be so professional. I'm sorry that I'm not using the best equipment here. But if you're in my channel, hopefully you are learning new stuff from my videos, not judging because of the appearance. Cool. Okay. So I was just looking at the content that I was working on the last months and last year also. So I'm going to include more crack me scenarios that I was solving last year a lot. Um, I'm going to use different tools like Jidra or Ida Pro. Um, Sometimes we will use other debuggers like Oli Debugger, Immunity Debugger, BinDBG. Um, we will use like different tools. It will not be um, so advanced videos. I will try to keep them low key, um, more introduction to videos so that we can learn about different tools. And you know the story. I mean, if you want to learn more about the tool, first you need to get some of it of um, encouragement to learn from these videos, introduction to videos. And after that, you can find your own way as I did for myself. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is that um, I'm gonna share these crack me videos uh, for a few crack me with different tools. Um, I'm planning to also include some exercises from Rock Imperium um, because I think my Windows reversing skills are better than my Linux reversing skills which cannot be an excuse. So I'm also working on my Linux reverse engineering skills which is completely out of OSEE topics, but I still do, I enjoy it. So I will probably share a few exercises from there as well. Cool, um, besides these, um, I got some requests and it was already in my mind. So I will include heap exploitation scenarios, probably a few videos for talking about the tier of heap exploitation. How is it different from stack, um, stack overflows and stack related techniques like all these air hunting, C, etc. I will talk about these and I'll also talk about heap spraying and how it's different from heap exploitation. When you learn about these, they're completely two different topics. Heap spraying is a method to deliver the payload. Heap exploitation is pure exploitation on heap and you, you don't see it in the uh, recent uh, Windows operating systems. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna cover these in the next videos. I'll try to create like weekly videos, but yeah, who knows? Some, some weeks are crazy busy, so I can promise that. Anyway, after these, I'm still learning. So don't judge here. I'm not an expert on these, um, but I will create kernel exploitation videos. We'll learn together. So don't judge. I may say something um, that an expert may not like, um, but it's okay. I'm, I'm in my journey. I am really passionate about this and I'm learning nonstop. Like this week, for instance, I'm feeling physically tired on um, because of working on these topics, but it's fun and I'm learning a ton and it's for my future. Anyway, I used to always say that I hate doing chit chat, but I guess I'm changing in time when I'm creating these YouTube videos. Cool. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to start this video that I've uh, created before um, on introduction to IDA Pro and how to solve an easy crack news. Cool. So we are, I'm using Macos, by the way. I'm having it in my Mac system and I'm going to do, I'm going to use a debugger on my Windows system. So this video will also include how to use a remote Windows debugger as well. I'm just launching IDA Pro and I'm clicking on the exe file in my local directory. 
when I click on it, it brings me these options. It detects some of the stuff, but it um, doesn't have to be accurate. You can change these values like portable, executable, um, detects like the processor type, etc. You can change these. You don't have to go with the default options. But for the sake of this exercise, I will go with the default option. I will say OK. I will just choose the default options. It will load all these. There's some PDP file that I will choose. Um, so yeah, I don't want to accept the network connection as well. Incoming network connection, and here we have it. So let me give a bit of intro here. Um, so IAPR is a very complex and powerful program. Um, you can use it in your reverse engineering journey. Um, it's going to be very handy um, and will be your best friend probably. You can do static analysis. You can just load the binary and debug the files, or you can attach a debugger, which we're going to do today. Um, also, there are two... Um, options 32 bits executable and 64 bits executable coming when you pay that uh, huge price for that <laughs> debugger, but you're just paying it once. So um, if you're willing to just go for it. And um, the 30, 32 bits and 64 bits executable options are important to keep in mind because while they're disassembling, it's important that you're choosing the right executable for your binary file um, if you're using the compiler. Um, which you will, so it's important to keep this in mind. So we load the file, we look at the options, uh, if these are fine, um, because IDA detects this um, automatically, but it may not be proper. You can just adjust settings. So up there, um, we see this graph of all these sections in, in binary. So we are he uh, here seeing the graph view. Um, it's start of the function and the other nodes. Um, whenever there's like a comparison or condition, this flow chart goes, in, goes into different nodes. Like I mentioned, there are 32 bits and 64 bits executable options in here. Um, it's important to choose the right option while you're using the compiler, um, which can create issues later. Cool. Um, like I mentioned, um, up here we have the graph of all the sections in the binary. We have the library function, regular function, instructions, data, um, color for each of these. You can like go to these sections and check it out yourself. Um, so yeah, we have these IW in here. You can better see it in the text, um, text view or uh, in the graph view, just like that. I just clicked on one of these functions to see the whole graph view in here, which we're gonna use a lot. There's a hex view, it's just like a hex editor. Um, there's a structures, Adapter detects these automatically. Um, and if you click on um, control plus, it will show all the variables as well. Um, you can also like add new structures or, or edit these as well. So just to keep in mind, we're seeing all the variables in here for this one, for instance. Very cool. Um, after that, we have the enumer enumeration uh, here. Uh, we'll talk about it later. There's the imports. Um, this lists all the important functions um, for dynamic analysis. Double click on the function and it will take you to the address. Uh, as you can see, there's kernel 32 uh, because these binaries need to communicate with kernel and their user 32 bit um, library. And you're seeing the function names in here. Um, yeah, and there are exports. These are also the function names. Um, there are some familiar stuff there. Um, yeah, we. If you want to go to one of these functions, we'll just click on it and then the IW, it will show whether as a text or, or the graph view. Um, and the functions, you're also seeing some subroutines. Um, yeah, we can also right click and edit, change the name, um, or just double click to see the assembly in IW. Very cool. We also have the output screen in here. As you can see, there's Python or IDC, which is a native language, scripting language for IDA. Um, you can also use these um, console, which is pretty handy, especially for Python if you're calculating something uh, with hacks or anything. Um, it's, it's pretty handy. You don't have to go to um, your command prompt every single time or the terminal. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll use it later as well. And um, there are a lot of uh, plugins and um, scripts online for IDA. Um, so you can also use it in here. It will it will become very handy in the future exercises, not this one. This is a very um, easy one. You can also see the subweaves in here. For instance, I'm just checking out the stri uh, strings in there. Um, you can just click on that strings, which will be handy later again. Um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll use that later. Um, 
it just popped up in there. Uh, let me sort this out by address. Um, yeah, we are seeing all kinds of um, strings in here um, that we will use for CVC. Congrats, well done, sorry. These are the um, strings that we will see later when we are interacting with the uh, with the application with the exa file. Uh, let's see the debuggers. Uh, right now, my default debugger is remote Windows debugger that I'm going to use in my um, VirtualBox. Um, um, as you can see it in here. And what I'm doing right now is that with IDA, there are Windows 32, Windows um, 64 bit exa files coming under this debug SRV folder. You're all, you can also use it for any other remote operating system uh, that you have. So you will just put this exa file in that remote system that you have. You will run this file and it will communicate with IDA. You just need to get this IP address of the virtual machine. I'm just going with this remote Windows debugger. Um, later, and I will set up the um, settings. So if I um, start the debugging process by pressing on this play button, I'm not writing any parameters. I'm just writing the IP address for this um, that I grab from the, my virtual machine. Part will be the default part. There's no password for it. Um, so I'm just writing these default options. I'm saying, okay, um, just ignore these for now. And here is the debugging screen that popped up for us. As you can see, there's hex view, there's like the registers, uh, the stack information you can see, and we are seeing accepting connection um, in our exa file. As you can see, this is our um, binary that we are testing. It asks for a serial key. If you write the wrong one, it says wrong serial key, try again. And the exercise is to patch this binary in a way that it will always say congrats, whatever value they're writing. Um, if I go to strings again um, and sort by address, I know what the, uh, these strings mean now. Um, so I'm seeing in here like cracking lessons, congrats, well done, sorry, wrong serial key, try again, etc. So if I run this exa file without uh, attaching it to the binary, I'm just looking at the options. What do I have in here? So um, I can write my input in here. When I say check, it will say, sorry, wrong serial key, try again. If I click on about, this is giving me this output coded by, and um, there's the exit option. So now it makes sense what these strings mean. When I click on congrats, and when I open it in the um, graph view, um, here's the start of the function. I'm seeing um, a lot of nodes in here, and I will try to understand what does this mean. There's this congrats, well done, or sorry, wrong serial key. Um, and before that, there's a node. Apparently, there's like a comparison or like a condition situ situation, um, and it goes to one of these. So this will be my point. Um, this, uh, as you can see, um, EX is comparing itself uh, with itself. And then there is jump not zero statement, which goes to the right side automatically, right? But we want to go to the left side. So let's see what, do, what else do we have in here. Um, this is the beginning of the function, obviously. Um, and here I'm seeing the exit um, exit code, it's, it's obvious. There's also like the about button, which are completely separate from the flow. Um, there's this uh, function here, get um, item test A. Obviously this is gonna be related to what we're doing in here. It goes through all this flow um, to this last node, which makes a comparison between AX or register to AX itself and making jump not zero um, and go to the right side, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint at this test um, instruction and I will start debugging it. I'm clicking on the um, run button, writing that P address. Oops, I wrote it wrong, not push AX. It just keeps all this instruction that you recently inserted in IDA Pro, so yeah. Cool, um, let's have a look. So it just showed me that this graph view um, and it pops up this, um, this, this binary. I'm writing a random value and it hits my breakpoint test e -E 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 -X, e -X, it compares itself. So it does jump not zero. If I step into it, you can also like look at the option F7, F8, et cetera. If I click on it, like Ida shows me where it's gonna go for the next step. Uh, it's obviously we're going to go to sorry, sorry option, right? And if you understand a bit of assembly, this says they, they jump not zero, um, go to that, um, go to that function. If I make it jump zero, um, I'm expecting it to go to the left side, right? 
but it's not that easy uh, because if you go to the left side, which it will uh, it will do with this condition, we're realizing that um, it's just gonna stuck in the same same loop. Um, it's just gonna stuck in the same loop, and um, we're gonna go back to our breakpoint over and over again. So what I want to do is I want to compare left side with the right side. I'm seeing on the right side there's push 10 h, and left side push 30 h. I'm changing it to push 10 h. After that, there are offsets, there's variables, and as you can see, there's push EAX while on the right side we're having push zero. So I'm thinking that I need to have push zero as well on the left side in order to have the message box and um, hopefully not get stuck with the um, breakpoint over and over again. Anyway, I'm doing it again because my application crashed. I'm putting a breakpoint at task EAX, EAX, just doing the exact same thing, nothing different, writing the host name. And the IP address port is default. Just starting the debugging screen again. Um, ignore these parts for now. Um, my screen popped up. I'm just writing this random value. Going back there, hit the breakpoint. Um, so I'm just going to change my AX register value to zero um, so that I can push zero uh, before calling the message box, right? I'm changing this value U type from 30H to 10H to um, make it a bit similar to the right side. I'm thinking that that's the flow for the application for me to give a, a meaningful result. Then there's push offset. It's obviously like these strings that we saw before. Um, I changed the push AX basically to be zero. And when I change it, as you can see, it's going to the left side, right? I'm just going through it. Um, so run until return. When you look at that, it says, well done. We'll patch the file. Um, that's all we needed to do. And um, right, we, we, we passed it and that's the solution for this exercise. Now, what do you think? Um, did I go so quickly? Uh, was it easy? Um, I, I mean, it says in the website on Crack Me itself that it's a very easy exercise, like very, very easy. Um, there are a bit more harder um, exercises later that I, I want to include with IDA Pro and Jitter as well. Um, so I don't know if you like the introduction for Ida Pro as well. Like I just tried to introduce the UI view, um, like the most common things that you're going to use. There are shortcuts also that you need to be familiar with. If you want to like, uh, use it quickly, for instance, from text view to graph view, if you want to change it, you need to click on P and then, um, space, you know, these kind of shortcuts. I think I may create another introduction to Ida Pro version 2.0, whatever video, the second video for Ida Pro, um, because people write books about it. I'm definitely not there. I'm using it since last year, September, maybe, I don't know. Um, so I didn't um, get my hands dirty with it enough yet, but I think I learned a bit. So I'm just trying to show it with a very easy exercise from Crack Me. So what did we learn? Before this video, if you didn't know about Crack Me, now you do. It's just like a website, like Try Hack Me or Hack the Box, but it's not including CTFs for web, mobile, whatever exercises, but it's for binary. You can download an exe file and I'll patch it for the purpose that's written on the website. And you can do reverse engineering at that time. Um, you can use different tools. You can use IDA. You don't have to use IDA Pro, by the way, if you didn't buy it. Um, not all the functionalities will be available, but for these exercises, I think it should be enough. You can also use Jitra, um, which is an amazing tool as well that I will do another introduction video for. Um, it's a very cool one. I like it as well. Um, so yeah, you're gonna learn a few stuff. You have to know assembly. Um, I would not encourage you to go through this directly if you don't know any assembly knowledge. Um, for that, people also ask me like, what did you do to learn assembly? First of all, I learned this in college, so I was already familiar with it. Then when I was preparing for OACP like ages ago, I learned a bit more assembly for like buffer overflow, um, but it was like so low key, so, so easy stuff. Then I got um, Pentester Academy's 32-bit SLA course. Um, SLA, yeah. I'm, I'm saying the <laughs> name correctly, I guess. So that was a good one. And then I checked the 6 to 4 bit as well because architecture is different for 6 to 4 bit. So you need to understand also the differences. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, and it's not so expensive. Even for six months, you go for it if you want to learn assembly. It really gave me a basic understanding of 
um, the instructions, like how to play around with the assembly code, etc. And when I learned about Rob gadgets last year, in summer, I guess, it was pretty intense uh, assembly knowledge that you have to play with. Um, and there's Rob TXT and Rob suggestions of TXT files. I think I may also create another Rob, Rob video because people really liked it. And um, I know how much I suffered from this topic. So I'm sure that other people has the same problem. So why not? As always, uh, drop a comment if you like the video. Um, I don't know if you like these introduction videos, but I think it gives a basic understanding of the concept. So I don't know if you like it, I can continue creating these kind of video guys, videos, guys. Um, but yeah, just ping me and drop a comment. Don't be a stranger. Um, tell me what you want to see for the next videos. Cheers, guys.